If you've ever wondered how you can split test your email subject lines in your sequences inside a ConvertKit, well, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. I'm Jason from NurtureKit, NurtureKit.co. And if you've sent a broadcast before inside of ConvertKit, you know that there is a real easy way to do this with the broadcasts just from a click of a button. However, sequences are not that simple. You can't do that inside of a sequence. And with what I'm going to show you today, you'll not only have this set up for subject lines, but you're going to be able to test anything that you want inside of the emails. It can be subject lines, it can also be specific content, it can be your calls to actions, it could be the entire template, and your creativity is the limitation here. So without getting into the nuances of split testing, I just wanna point out a couple of things. One is that you want to figure out what it is that you wanna test. If you're looking for higher open rates, then just test the subject lines or maybe the preview text or a combination of that. If you want to test more clicks, then you're going to wanna to test your CTAs, your calls to action. They could be buttons, they could be links, they could be images. You don't wanna to try to mix and match things because then when the results happen, you're not sure what actually affected that result. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that you do want these tests some to have some breathing room. Give them some amount of time to become statistically significant. And I look for having a thousand subscribers go through each side of the test before I make a decision. If you don't have that many people going through a sequence, there does become a period of time at which the results degrade, but you can make a judgment call for yourself, right? And if you have 500 going through each branch or 100 going through each branch, if you start to see a big deviation, well, then maybe you can just assume what works. The good thing about all of this is, is that if you subscribe to the driver tag philosophy, no pun intended, really what that means is that you're using tags to move subscribers from various different automations in your account. If you have the enhanced double opt-in in place, I would suggest that you inject this into that as well. This will allow you to then bucket your subscribers for all future tests. You don't have to do the math each and every time that you want to test. Like I said, the goal of this is really to be able to test different variations of emails inside of sequences. Um, but ultimately really what it's trying, what you want to do is understand and learn what resonates with all of your subscribers. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is duplicate the sequence. When you go into any sequence, if you go up to settings and scroll down, you'll see a duplicate uh, button. You click on that, it'll bring up this confirmation and you'll be able to go ahead and duplicate it, right? So I've done that already. I've done shared uh, version A and you'll see version B, okay? So the next thing that we're going to wanna do is actually set the custom field. Now, this visual automation uh, is available via the share link below. If you're interested in getting all the share links for everything on this channel, go ahead and check out nurturekit.co slash shared um, and you'll be able to get them from there. Now, the start split test tag kicks this off. Once that tag gets applied to a subscriber, they're going to enter into this. The next step is, is we're going to set a custom field. Now I set var underscore bucket. Now var, don't worry about it. It's really just my notation that it is an internal custom field. And I like to bunch all of those up in the UI. So var underscore as a prefix does that for me. Now this little bit, which you can grab from below in the description is the date in seconds. And we're going to do a calculation based off of that. So that's what the now in quotes does. It brings the time at which it, this subscriber encountered this node in the visual automation. We're going to convert it to the number of seconds, right? So it's a nice number. And then modulo basically divides the, the number of seconds by two, but gives us the remainder. So the remainder will either be zero or one. So Math lesson closed. Um, and now we're going to move into the conditional, which checks the, the remainder. 
in that custom field. Now we check var bucket, right? So you can var bucket matches zero. Right? If it matches zero, we'll go into pass them into version A. If it does not, which it would be number one, pass it into version B. And that's it. It's, that's as simple as it gets, right? So again, the math, the magic here is this. And now we're storing that zero or one on every subscriber that gets passed through this. So that's why I encourage you, if you're using the enhanced double opt-in, set this node inside there, because as soon as they come on board, you're setting that on that subscriber. And then you don't have to do this on every single automation that you wanna test the sequences moving forward. All you really need is just this conditional. And so that gives you the flexibility and robustness as you start to grow your account, especially in sales pitches and things of that nature. You don't have to worry about what was that math again? How do I get that? You just basically check what bucket do they belong in, one or zero. I hope that was helpful. Hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon so that you get notified the next time a new video drops. And remember, if you treat your lists like humans, amazing transformations will happen.